All right, first question. Jocko and Echo. Jiu-Jitsu is a long, repetitive grind. That said, there are occasional highlights. Aha moments. Submissions you're proud of, your personal legends, quote-unquote, or maybe key embarrassments. What are some of those for each of you? So what is an aha moment? That's when you learn something really important, in my opinion. Right. Now, the you. first part of this where it says BJJ is a long, repetitive grind, no, I don't think so. Agree. Disagree. Yeah, I, I, disagree. Yeah, I disagree with that, yes. Uh, to me, BJJ is a fun, exciting road of enlightenment. Right. That's Ups and what downs, is. for sure. Oh, yeah. There's some, oh, there's some rough days on the mats. Yeah. <laughs> there's some rough days grinded, on the mats. You'll get grinded, for sure. No doubt about that. Uh, a couple for me. Well, one of them for sure. I've told the story before about how I started training jiu-jitsu. Uh, SEAL Team Master Chief, guy named Steve Bailey, awesome guy, was a fighter, fought Muay Thai, and he was training with the Gracies in the early 90s, late 80s. He was training up in the garage in Torrance, right, right. and so he knew jiu-jitsu. And he asked a bunch of us if we wanted to train. A couple of us said yes. He choked us out. He arm-locked us. I was amazed. And I thought that that was all of jiu-jitsu. And he was like literally a white belt. But 1990 or whatever, pre-UFC, it was a big deal. Uh, so anyways, to, to tell this story quickly, one of the guys that was with me in that initial training was a guy named Jeff Higgs. Jeffrey Higgs was a SEAL buddy of mine. I went through SEAL training with him. Awesome guy. And we both were kind of training together at that time. We trained for like four or five months, tops. And then... We weren't in the same platoon. We came back, and Higgs actually started training with Fabio Santos mm. all the time. And he got out of the Navy just to train jujitsu. And I was still in the SEAL teams going on deployment, blah, blah, blah. So one day he comes over to my house. He had just gotten his purple belt, and I was a white belt. And he goes, hey, you want to train? And I said, yeah, because, I mean, I thought, you know, I know the stuff that he knows because I learned it three years ago or four years ago or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, let's do it. So we went across the street into the grass and just he just choked me. I mean, just destroyed me, right? Brand new purple belt showing off his skills on <laughs> right. my neck. Eager to do it. Eager too. to show yeah, off hungry. the skills. And Higgs is actually, he's an awesome guy, super humble. Yes. And he was actually, the you know, he was doing me a huge favor. Yeah. You know, showing me that, hey, you're, you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And so that was, a, that was an aha moment. I don't know anything. So that was, a, uh, that was a, a good aha moment for me. Yeah. Mine was re way more, uh, it was a lot shorter. So me and, um, me and Cake Nuts, mm -hmm. Navy SEAL, one of my best friends, we went um, down to, remember when Dean had that spot? That yeah. It was like a half a spot. Yep, yep. <clears throat> So that's where I first started. This was like maybe a month in. And I knew, I went in knowing what mount and guard, side mount, rear naked choke. I knew that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to really function in any of those positions, but I knew what they were. And I knew how to be in them and stuff. So that was it. I thought I was a pretty solid athlete. I was like 225, mm -hmm. solid. Was this your first time training with Dean? Yeah, this was my oh. first time actually rolling with Dean. Oh, okay. But he had he was the he was a teacher, you yeah, know, yeah. It was like a small group of us. And um so I was like, Oh shoot, um you know, Dean that was when in his height when he mm -hmm. he was coming off his ADCC win, he had a super fight that year against um John Jock. John Jack. Yeah. So um he was the man, you know. Yep. So I was like, Oh, I'm gonna roll with Dean. But um so I maybe outweighed him by, you know, I don't know, five five pounds mm -hmm. whatever but i was like hey what if i what if i get dean that'll be so awkward you know like i got him and you know <laughs> and then because you know maybe yeah. i'll spaz and catch a submission i yeah, don't know yeah, yeah. you know yeah. who knows it's a, it's it's possible right no, so so it was me and cake nuts and, and dean was like yeah i'll roll with you guys you know welcome to the, the academy or whatever and um, so i'm like all right so i roll in right when he you know how you kind of we didn't start standing up. He kind of sat down in yeah. front of me, and you yeah. just start to slowly roll. He just he grabbed me, yeah. and now it's called when you lock up with someone, right? Right? You understand that that's what it's called. But when we locked up, when mm -hmm. he grabbed me, that's the moment I you realized, oh yeah, that that probability of me catching him is literally at this point zero. Yeah, literally, just right when he grabbed me, mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, just the way he was, and 
it just you didn't feel like you could just do anything. And then of course he beat me up. And um, when it's funny when Cake Nuts rolled with him, remember that thing? And he did it in ADCC, I think, against Salo. When you get into a certain position, he gets kind of under you, and then he picks you up and oh, stands yeah. up and walks around mm-hmm, with you. Mm-hmm. So he did that to Cake Nuts, and then when I rolled with him again, he did that to me. <laughs> but with me, he grabbed me and he went bam, bam, and bash me against the wall. Not hard, just yeah, playful. Just fun. Just to show me again that, you know, the chance of me actually doing anything or having any control over this whole experience was was zero. Um, so that's that's that aha moment that I was like, okay, this jujitsu thing is way more, because I was bigger than him. I knew I could lift more weights than him. I know that, you know, at this point. But it, it didn't matter at all. Um, so that's, yeah, that's when I realized so, that so I got a lot more powerful. I got a good one. So I was... A white belt, a white belt, but I was training. Oh, this is it. So after Higgs comes to my house, he destroys me. I'm like, okay, I'll be there tomorrow. Give me the address. Yeah, yeah. I walk in. I'm like, hey, I want to sign up for unlimited classes. Do you want to try a class? No, I want to sign up for unlimited classes <laughs> yeah. now. At Fabio's. Yep, at yeah. Fabio's. So go in there, start training, and just I'm taking classes during lunch. I'd drive down from the team, go take a lunch class. I would train with guys in the morning. Anyone I could get to train with, I would do training. And then I'd come at night, I'd take the beginner's class, and I'd take the advanced class. Mm-hmm. And then I'd do open mat. And then then Fabio would kick, kick Dean and I off the mat at 9 o'clock and tell us to get lies. <laughs> and uh, so when he was, I was training, but I was still a white belt, right? Mm-hmm. So this guy shows up, and it's another SEAL. And I didn't know him. He was from the East Coast, and I didn't know him. And he was strong, and he was a blue belt. Right, mm-hmm. so I go, okay, this guy's a blue belt, he's gonna be good. Well, we had some wars, right? So I'm a white belt, he's a blue belt, but I'm training out in San Diego, which has really good jujitsu. Obviously, I'm training with Dean, learning from Fabio, we're training all the time, so I'm pretty good for a white belt, right? Right, so him and I are having a war, and he's only in town for about a week or maybe a week and a half, white two weeks at the most. Uh, white belt war, white belt <sighs> warriors, so we. We're going stalemate every day, stalemate, stalemate, stalemate. The last day, the last day, he gets a he gets mounted. I mean, he was a wrestler in college, a college wrestler, and okay. a very competitive guy and a great guy, by the way. The last day, he like knows he wants it. He gets mounted on me. He digs in a a, a choke, a gi choke, like an X choke, mm-hmm. and just puts the pressure. And uh, smashing my face, doesn't care, and gets into my neck. I tap. <laughs> and that's that. So, so this guy, now we, you know, he goes back to the East Coast. We continue with our careers. I'm now training even more. You know, I'm just training and training and training and training. And I'm training with Dean. I, went, I ended up going to college. When I went to college, I trained even more. Mm. And then finally, so I would see him occasionally, you know, and it's, oh, you're still training? He goes, yeah, you know, I'm still training, still training. And he, he actually competed, competed in Worlds and did well in Worlds as a purple belt. I think he actually won Worlds as a purple belt. Mm-hmm. And eventually got his brown belt. And so finally, like 10 years later, so now, I mean, I, I'm literally Dean's main training partner for something like 12 years at this point. Mm-hmm. And like you said, this is when Dean's just dominating. And so we, we, I, I'm going to a SEAL conference mm. on this remote location. And I look at the roster of who's going to be there, and he's going to be there. <laughs> and I went to Home Depot, and I bought like a 30 by 30 canvas, <laughs> um, a canvas you know, tarp. To put on the ground so I could train with him, mm-hmm. and we and I, I sent him an email. I was like, "Hey, I see that you're coming to the conference. Let's train." And he's like, yeah, "Absolutely, look forward to it." I'm like, "I do too." Yeah. And so we get out there, we fly to this place, we meet up, and I say, "Hey, let's train." And we get on the mat, and I'm just you know like a thousand times better than I was. And I'm again, I'm at this point, I've been training with Dean. I had gone through a whole competition phase. So anyways, and he's been working and he's been deploying and he's mm-hmm. been being a SEAL. So, I mean, I just trained more and and I was just all over him. Mm-hmm. And so I submitted him a bunch of times and then, and then you know, he kind of said like, can you just show me some stuff? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, sorry. <laughs> For you, that was the victory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but it was funny. And then I would always joke with him about it and I kind of tell that story. He was like, Almost, I I put the spin on it 
as if I was thinking about him the whole time. It's not true. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. just yeah, but, uh, and then one time years later I saw him and, and we were at, in, uh, we were in DC, we were actually at the Pentagon. Hadn't seen him for a year or two. Mm-hmm. And I see him and I'm in my, my khaki uniform, you know, with short sleeves. And he's like, oh, you, you looking skinny, you losing weight. And I looked back and I said, I'm just trying to get down to your weight class to make it more even next time. <laughs> he just laughed. But a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Great leader. Great guy. That's funny. That that happens a lot of the time where you'll develop just through, whether it be through this kind of thing where you trained and then they leave and they come back kind of thing, or someone who hangs around, you develop that little sense of competition. It usually happens with a guy who's close to you. Mm. He kind of starts with you or maybe kind of you meet him and you're just, you guys start off the, the relationship, for lack of a better term, you start off at, a similar level, mm-hmm. you know, and then you kind of develop this little competition, like that's yeah. the guy, you know. Yeah, and you always, when you get off the bus, when you get off the training bus, it's you're gonna lose time, <laughs> you know. People yeah. are gonna get better if you. That's why you can't get off the bus. Yeah, you got to stay on the bus at all costs. You got to stay on the training bus. Yeah, if you get off the bus completely, people are gonna Stuff, the, yeah. the bus is going away. Right. Yeah, and if they're on the, if your little training buddy's oh, on that bus, oh yeah, yeah, it's very very hard to catch. You're up done. That one. But there's been a series of uh, periods over time. You know, one of them that's that always Dean and I talk about a lot is he was killing me for like three months with the front head and arm, just just hammering me with it and just couldn't get out of it, and smashing me. And then one day he goes, "Oh, if you want to get out of it, just do put your hand on the hip and switch your head to the other side." Yeah. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> so I tried. I'm like, seriously, you yeah. didn't. It's been three months, and you didn't show me that. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's your deal? Uh, you know. Yeah. And uh, but it also showed me that that is sometimes what I remember from that is that sometimes these simple moves are so effective and they're so obvious, and all you need is just to get that little bit of knowledge. You know, to make you be able to escape this position that I was held in for three months. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't a even call them obvious, knowledge. but just sm- seemingly obvious, like 20, hindsight, yes. 2020. Hindsight, 2020, yeah. 20, they seem obvious. Yes, you're right. But it, it's, it's the, that's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu. And you yeah. never know. It's another thing. That's why you don't get off the bus, because you never know what day you're going to learn that thing. Yeah. What minute, what training partner is going to say, hey, if you moved your hips right here, you'd, you'd have tapped me. Yeah. And you yeah. say, oh, wow. Yeah, actually, Dean taught me something in that exact same scenario. He didn't, he didn't hammer me with it and then teach it to me. He, was, he just was, he noticed that I had an opportunity to do it. It was just a small thing. It's, bit, it's, it's hard to explain without, you know, doing it, but he did that. But it was just a matter of, instead of moving your hips the natural way that you always want to do, you just twist them the other way and it breaks a certain grip yeah. that he can control you with. But yeah, so it is so true. What about um, like um, you know some embarrassments? That you can it, count I, on. I, I don't. I don't get embarrassed on the mat. I mean, you get tapped out. It happens. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm not embarrassed by it. Yep. Um, even if you get caught, I mean, it just doesn't matter. Well, how would you be embarrassed? Yeah. I think. Yeah, and embarrassed, I think, is a strong term because that's true. I mean, I don't think I've ever been like embarrassed, like ah, oh, but I. Actually, is I think pretty much only with you, where <laughs> and it's not embarrassing. It's just like when I think back on it, I'm like, man, I should have been maybe mentally tougher. Remember when I used to mm. like give into like a claustrophobia oh, thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, But yeah. you were real good at it because I'd only catch it with you. Yeah, yeah. No, once I realized that weakness, I acted like Chairman Mao and just like, attacked <laughs> the weakness and would just yeah. smother your, your claustrophobia. Uh, yeah. And there was a few times where I was like... I admitted to myself that I was like, I, I didn't want to deal with that at that time. And I was like mad at myself, but I was never really you embarrassed. You know what? Know that Next time like, we roll, I'm going to explore your go? improvement. Good. Bro, yeah, bro. You tested it the other day because you have a thing and whatever, do do you, but you wear uh, cotton shirts a lot mm-hmm. of the time. when you. So after rolling for a while, that cotton shirt is like, a, like being waterboarded yeah. in certain positions. Yeah. And you were waterboarding me the other day. Yeah, and but man, no, hey, no, no factor, no vote. Ooh, I wasn't giving like into that, that one. I like that, Jocko Podcast is helping out. Echo, this <laughs> jujitsu game. Legit. Anyway. All right, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's all in. But I agree with you. It's not a grind. It's yeah, not, I don't no, think it's a daily grind. grind. And you know, looking back, the question also says, "What submissions are you proud of?" 
Yeah. Like, again, that's sort of like the embarrassment thing. You right. Know, you do a submission. Hey, your jujitsu worked. Yeah. And yeah. even when I talk to people, and they, like, they say, oh, I'm going to catch you one day. Right. And I go, good, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu works. If you use it yeah. on me, it's going to work. And I would, I will admit that that right there, I'm going to catch you one day. That's, that's there, but not to any like legitimate or significant degree. Cause I'll tell you, I have that in my head about you. I'll catch you one day. And I know you have it in your mind that no, you won't. And even if you were to tell me, no, I don't have that in my eyes straight. I wouldn't well, believe no, you. Well, no, I, but, I, I accept it, you know, because here's the deal. If I just didn't want, if I didn't want you to ever catch me, what would I do? wouldn't roll with you right yeah but i don't care <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean i'm i'm gonna roll with you all the time yeah it, whoever steps on the mat yeah because what's exactly the worst case scenario me. get tapped out it means i got a little bit better yeah yeah and it kind of presents those opportunities to be like okay my game's not all perfect because if you yeah. don't get tapped, you don't realize how many holes you have you know when you're when you're sometimes, getting everybody all the sometimes time sometimes you do make like a little mistake and this is a good life lesson too sometimes you make a little mistake with somebody and you're lax with somebody right. And they get, and they might catch you. When, yeah. when normally if you went a hundred times more and you didn't r- relax at that moment, but you can't live in that world because you got to relax when you train. Otherwise you won't explore new positions and get put in compromised positions and all that. So, yeah. And again, it's not to any real significant degree. It's more just like a fun kind of competition thing that you have with certain people. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to tap that guy one day, you know, or you'll, you don't talk trash to him or whatever. That's how. Unfortunately, I'm the victim of that attitude towards me. Yeah. Well, you have I to mean, be I was watching the, two of the our, guy at the top. Two of our good guys roll today. They're rolling with each other. They're laughing. They're having, having fun. fun. <laughs> they're literally laughing. They're yeah, literally yeah. like telling jokes to each other. Yep. When it's my turn to go with them, it's yep. murder nope. time. Yep. They're yep. bringing it. They're smashing. Yep. They're bringing it. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was. Bones, Bones Jones, Justin Jones, oh, yeah, yeah. who's an animal and strong and good, and it was Taylor. Taylor and Taylor's just a complete beast. Yeah. But those guys are rolling with each other. It's all giggles right, and laughing, games. and they come with, with me, and they bring in the heat. Because yep. you know what they're thinking? Exactly what you just said. Maybe they can get that tap. Yeah. Get it today. You know, it will be a grind, though, if you have this specific mindset, which, which can be common. Yeah. Um, and sometimes your mind can go in and out of it where if you if your goals are predicated on like something outside of just learning jujitsu, like sometimes people would be focused on the belt, you oh, know, like, yeah. oh, I want to get my purple belt or whatever. And yeah. when am I going to get that purple belt? And then people tell you the answer really is, if you want to answer that question, put in the time, put in the work, learn all this stuff. And one day it will come to you. Yeah. So you know, it's if just, that's it's your the, goal. It's the same thing when I talk about people in their, in their career. You know, and they say, I want to get promoted. I want to get, if you're in yeah. your career to get promoted, it's going to be a grind. Yeah. If you're in, if you're in, in your career, you're trying to do a good job. Like when I was in the military, I didn't care about promotion. I was just yeah. trying to do a good job. And when yeah. you do a good job, you'll get noticed at some point yep. and you'll get your promotion. Yeah. But if, if all you're trying to do is get promoted and scheme and maneuver and all that stuff, it's right. not going to be fun. Yeah. And it's what, yeah. And it's whack. And you see people, everyone, you can, when someone's doing that, you can tell. Because they'll be, oh, yeah. when the teacher's around, they won't roll with good guys and get good work. They'll just, you know, they'll do stuff or oh, they'll avoid they rolling with oh, people because yeah. they want to look good and demonstrate to the teacher, hey, look, I'm rolling like a purple belt. Give it to me. You know, so they have that kind of approach to it and it gets in your way. And yeah, it will be a grind because you're yeah. going to be like, man, how many hours do I got to put into this thing? Because you're focused on when am I going to get the belt? And you can fall in and out of that sometimes too, especially because because it kind of depends depends on your environment. If everyone's thinking like that, or if they're even vocal about it, you know, you can't help but kind of maybe feel that and be like, maybe that's kind of the thing, you know? Yeah, don't worry about your belt. Yeah, man, I didn't even know that there because when I started, I was going with Dean, so it was all no gi. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know really about belts. <laughs> and Jimmy, remember Jimmy? Yeah, he was like, "Hey, come to class tomorrow. Uh, we have." promotion so be sure to come and i was like oh that's cool i thought he meant promotions like some brands were coming in to promote their products and stuff so it'll be a fun time so i was like oh yeah that's cool he's like yeah so come like that and i'm like yeah all right i was like i might i said well i said i don't i can't really make it because usually i I work at night or whatever and he's like no no you want to come and i was like all right i said i'll try and sounds like fun and he's like no no you're getting promoted i was like what does that mean and i didn't say what does that mean but i was like I'm being, he's like, yeah, you're getting your blue belt. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, right? You get belts, right? But I was just training and competing. And I think that that, I learned like, I mean, I think as a white belt, if you're into it, 
you learn the most well, at sure. that time because you're going from zero up to yeah. like you know the learning curves yeah it's more large. steep for sure um but yeah i think that's a good attitude to, to maintain at yeah. all costs like maintain that attitude i just want to learn the next thing to learn if the it's other, timing the I'm other learn that. the other thing that's a bummer on that same topic is when people get the purple belt and you never see him again. Yeah. Or they get their brown belt and you never see him again. Or they get yeah. their black belt and you never see him again. You're, right. You know? Yeah. You're just starting out when you get your purple belt. Yeah. That's when you're starting to get good. That's when you're starting to become a real jiu-jitsu player. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's when you, when you have a lot, I don't want to say most or all or nothing, but you have a lot of legit set weapons. Yeah, now for You just sure. got to know how to use them. For you know, sure. You got to start learning how to use them. The difference yeah, between true. a purple belt and a blue belt, I mean, a purple belt, you know, I'll roll with purple belts in our gym and they're competitive, you yeah. know? Most of the blue belts, unless they're studs, are you know you're not going to be really threatened with anything, even positionally. Right. But the purple belt's a whole different story. You know, yeah. you make a mistake with the purple yeah. belt, they're, they're right you're there, going down. Yep, yep, absolutely true. And yeah, and that's that's a weird one because, in my experience anyway, um, I've seen they're like polar opposites as far as that kind of personality. The guy who will get a belt and disappear, or the guy who will get a belt and the day he gets his belt, he's like. Like he's been training for six months when you weren't looking or something, just in that one day. Because I think it's a mental thing. Oh, they rise to the occasion. Exactly they know right. They got it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in their mind, they're like. That's another number. good point. Don't be in a hurry to get your belts, anyways, because you you have so much more. You're free to make mistakes. Yep. You're a blue belt. You're a white belt. Yep. I kept one of my buddies as a white belt for like years, <laughs> and I said, and right now, you know what he is? Been training for ten years. Blue belt. <laughs> Because he's overseas, he's been traveling, all this stuff, and he should be a purple belt at least. Yeah. He's tapping out black belts, so they're going to give it to him where he's training, right. but yeah, yeah. it's one of those things. Yeah, the belt thing, is, and it's easier said than done, I think, especially if you're in a certain environment or a certain type of person, but um, but if if at all possible, don't think about the belt. No. Don't think about your belt. I don't think that's the- Think about the knowledge. Yeah, that'll be the one way ticket into this little realm of thinking jujitsu is a long, repetitive grind. Not guaranteed. I'm not saying that's why, but I'm saying that is a good way to, definite, to think like that. Definite factor. Yes, big time, big time. 